What's up, YouTube friends? It's your girl Malika from beingmamalika.com, and I am back with another video. And today we are working on our paycheck budget for the 1st of April. So let's go ahead and hop right on into it. I'm looking for last month's first paycheck budget so I can look at the salary amount on there. Okay. So we know our salary is always the same. It is 18. 37 um, we have I think $90 in a rollover zero child support zero bonus all my side hustles are at a standstill right now and so let's just add that up seven nine 1927 for our income for the month the first paycheck of April Next, we'll go ahead and put in our fixed expenses. We need to do our mortgage. And that is $9.78. We need to pay Great Lakes, which is $24.32. We need to pay Frontier, which is $89.95. And we need to pay a Verizon, which is $115. We are also going to pay, um, I didn't realize my Capital One card was the one that was still connected to my Groupon account, so I accidentally charged something to that card, so I need to pay that off. So Capital One will get 108, because I don't remember the change. And let's add that up and see what all is due for the first paycheck. Now I will say our paycheck budget is going to look a little bit different because like the rest of you guys, we are being affected by the coronavirus. We are at home, um, working from home, schooling from home, all of that. So our expenses are going to look a little bit different. This is actually going to be a cashless cash budget because we're not going anywhere. And so none of our usual expenses where we would pay cash, we're not able to pay cash for those. Um, we are ordering groceries and picking them up and we are... Um, picking up things like um, toilet paper and paper towels. We are even are giving for churches online now because we're not meeting at the building. Entertainment is things we're, you know, renting movies on Amazon. So all of these expenses are pretty much electronic now because of the stay at home orders that are in place. So that being said, I need a calculator. So give me a second. All right, teenager comes through in the clutch with a calculator. So let's add this up. 978 plus 2432 plus 8995 plus 115 plus 108. That is wrong. 108. Okay. So that leaves us with, oh, that's a total of 1300 $15.27. Now, let's talk about our regular cash envelopes. They are not going to be our general total. Let's subtract this first. So, $19.27 minus $13. We're going to round up $16. What are you doing? $13.16 gives us $611 left over here. So, for gas. We are totally, totally, totally not spending any gas money. I actually still have the $50 from last month's gas. So I'm probably going to use that. And I probably won't even use that because gas is at $1.50 a gallon here. So we are going to just nix our gas budget all together. For groceries, we are going to do $2.50 just because we're eating a little bit more at home. Home still has the same $40 in it because I can't find toilet paper anywhere. I can't order it online. I can't do any of that. Luckily, I do keep a stockpile of those things. So I'm not, um, 
we're not out or anything like that, but we haven't been able to buy any of those things. Um, giving is going to remain the same because like I said, we are doing online giving through our um, church's website now. So I can do that uh, through there without having to um, uh, need cash. There we go. So I'm going to leave these categories the same and see what happens. But that gives us a total then of 250 plus 40 plus 60 plus 40 plus 60. That's $450 instead of our usual um, $500. And six eleven minus that four fifty leaves us one hundred and sixty one dollars for our cash envelopes. We are going to try and go ahead and put um, the proper amounts for a few things away, so we're not like too far behind. Mostly um, Christmas and. Um, back to school because I know those will come whether this stuff is going on or not and I need to make sure that I'm on track to still have the right amount for those. Also, I'll put some more back into house maintenance because I had to spend some. Um, you guys heard last month my um, faucet was leaking so I had to buy a new faucet. I had to get some plumbing things fixed and now of course again my toilet <laughs> is leaking so lots of house maintenance that still needs to be done so I definitely want to make sure that I put something in that sinking fund. Um, graduation is a sticky one. We have actually already bought the prom dress. Um, and we're not sure what they're doing about prom. We're not sure what they're doing about any of the graduation events. <laughs> so I'm just going to kind of let that sit for a little bit and work on putting, um, just the regular amounts into kind of the other sinking funds. As far as school fees, we still have not made a decision on where the teenager is going next year. And so, therefore, we have not paid that enrollment fee. And so, I really don't know what any of those are going to be. So, I want to put my regular amount for back to school. It should be 30 bucks. So, I want to do that. Christmas, I think, is 45 So, I want to do that. So, those two off the rip. And then I want to do 40 here for house maintenance. And then I don't have any immediate birthdays coming up. I think I'm going to put this, some of this into car maintenance and some of this into um, travel. So I will put, let's do 25 here. And that leaves 21, well, another 20 here. So I think that is what we're going to do with this. These, actually, I am going to pull cash for because um, it is the end of the quarter. And I want to go ahead and make a deposit into those Capital One 360 accounts for all of the sinking funds that I do have cash for. So it's not just sitting um, at my house. So, 25 plus 40 plus 30 plus 20 plus 45 gives us $160 in our sinking funds. I think it's really important right now with everything that's going on to go ahead and have that money in those sinking funds just because... We're just really unsure of what's going to happen. So we want to make sure that we're saving absolutely as much money as possible. Um, and however that looks, whether it's in your emergency fund, whether it's in the form of sinking funds, sock that money away. I know we are getting ready to get, um, they've been talking about these stimulus payments. Think about that um, before you spend it. Everything is really up in the air right now. And so we really just want to make sure that... Um, we are prepared for whatever happens. So it's probably a good idea to just put that money to the side, hold on to it just in case something is uh, something comes up, whether it's, like I said, either allocating it amongst 
your seeking funds or putting it into your emergency fund, um, my advice would be just to hold on to it. Even um, if you're working your, uh, keep working your debt snowball, you know, um, the same way you would otherwise, but put that money to the side. So that's just my two cents there. So again, I said we're going to do no cash for our regular cash envelopes. What I'm actually going to do is just track them on an index card. Um, that just the same way I would do is if they were in the envelope, um, saying how much I'm spending out of each category. And then as far as these go, I'm going to go ahead and pull this $160 out of the bank, put it into those actual envelopes. Um, because if I leave that in the bank, it's going to get spent on probably food. So that's where we're at. So the only thing that we still need to do is do our um, totals for our envelopes. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball it here. So for this, I want um, 120 and 15. For this, I want 220s. For this, I want... 120 and 110, 120, 220s, and 15. So I actually bought these sticky pads or this sticky pad. Let's see if I can find it. From the Budget Mom. And so that's what I'll be using. Um, and it's just, it's an actual like post it. And I'll take this to the bank. So what I want to do is take this and kind of roll it over on here. I know this is $160. So I need zero $1 bills. I need two $5 bills, which is a total of $10. Tens, I just need one $10 bill, which is a total of $10. Twenties, I'm going to need one two, three, four, five, six, seven, which is $140, which equals to 160. And what I will do is take this to the bank and put it with my withdrawal slip so they know exactly um, what kind of bills I want so it's easy to split this up when I get home and stuff those envelopes. So there will be no cash envelope stuffing videos probably at least for the first half of this month just because it doesn't make sense to pull that money out to keep having to put it back in the bank to cover the um, transactions that we're doing for groceries and things like that. So that is all folks. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. Let me know again how your budget has changed during the coronavirus, are you still using cash envelopes? Are you using your debit card? How are we like maneuvering in this world of stay at home? Um, let me know. I'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.